All right, it's time for another Back to Basics video. Um, in this case, uh, it was brought to my attention that I hadn't discussed signal diodes, and I also haven't discussed LEDs yet, um, so keep an eye out for that video. But this week we're going to talk about signal diodes. Now in the past we've talked about your standard PN junction diode being... Um, let's bang out a quick... Uh, quick demonstration here. P-type, we'll oh, go ahead and grab the blue marker here, the N-type, and then we have the other side. So this is your standard general diode construction. Uh, if this was, there we go. So that's what a standard diode looks like, and you know, your 1N4007 diodes, they're constructed pretty much just like that. Uh, there's some variations in the, the, the concentration of doping in there, but um, I go into more detail in that in my previous diodes uh, video, which I will put right here. Anyway, so... <clears throat> That's what a standard diode looks like. And for your general purposes of, we want current flowing this way and not this way, your a standard power diode is going to do just fine. But if you start trying to operate these at high frequency, you know, if you've got an, al an alternating current waveform going through a diode, and we've talked about this before um, with half wave rectifiers, you'll just kind of get that. Um, but if this is really, really high frequency, you're going to run into a situation where this diode is going to start acting more like a capacitor. And your waveform is going to look really messy. Um, I'm not going to really bother drawing it. But basically, current stops liking to flow in it no matter which direction the current is flowing. So, they had to come up with a way to make a diode that reacted well in high-frequency conditions. And that's where the signal, or small signal diode, originated. So we're going to scoot this up just a little bit there. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take it fully off camera there. Um, anyway, so the construction of a small signal diode is... A little bit more complicated. So, we're going to have the cathode here with its conductive plate. And then we're going to put a section of heavily doped N type material on top of that uh, junction. So, this is going to be N plus. And then we're going to have a section of lighter material. Um, I have new colors that I want to play with, but uh, nothing really works for this, so we'll just um, do it like this. And this is going to be lightly doped in material, so that's N minus. All right, and then on top of that, we're going to have a section of just Marker is doing that thing that it does again. And then on top of that, we're going to have a section of P-type material. Now, it doesn't stop here. Once they've built that layer of, or that series of layers of semiconductor material, they then etch off a section of the diode like this, to form what is called a mesa. And it's going to look just like this once they're done. There we go. And then we'll grab the blue again. We'll bring it in like that. Oop, it's doing that leaky thing again. This is why I bought new markers, because these ones were acting weird and flowing very heavily. So let's go ahead and just switch to the new marker. There we go. Right, so then you've got that mesa. 
which reduces the capacitive, the parasitic capacitive uh, nature of the junctions between the P and N materials. And having lightly doped N material here makes the diode able to recover much faster from being biased in reverse. Um, the only other things they do at this point are, I wonder how well this is going to show up on camera. Uh, does that show up at all? That kind of does. I'll use something a little bit more vibrant. How about pink? This should show up better. That really doesn't show up much better either. So we'll, we'll stick with pink though. Anyway, so right here, they're going to have a glass passivation layer, which is a fancy way of saying they put glass there uh, to keep, to basically insulate that section of the mesa from any sort of leakage currents or, or transference from uh, the case. And then they'll have I guess I'll use black for this. You know, your standard little junction plate here onto the P-type material. And that's going to come up into the anode. And then around that, let's see how well orange is going to show up. Uh, and I've, I've shown this in, in other diode construction where they have a layer of um, silicon dioxide right here to cover up the junction plate onto the p-types so that there isn't any uh, parasitic electron emission off of any sharp edges. So that's what a signal diode looks like and because of the fact that they've etched away this little mesa and um, keep in mind that that's also cylindrical not flat um, the voltage rating of these goes way down, the current of these also goes way down, but their frequency response goes way up. So you can use these in high frequency applications like audio or RF or stuff like that. These aren't good for power applications. Um, if you need some appreciable power and quick, um, quick recovery time, probably go with a Schottky diode or something like that. But even Schottky diodes aren't really high rated for voltage. The highest Schottky diode I've seen so far was 100 volts, and it was quite expensive. Um, so yeah, signal diodes used in RF situations. Uh, you'll sometimes see them most often. They're uh, gallium, um, or not gallium, uh, germanium. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, you'll find that they are most often made with germanium instead of silicon, which makes their forward voltage drop about 0.3 volts instead of 0.5 to 0.7, like silicon diodes. Um, but that's pretty much all there is about signal diodes. Uh, high frequency, quick recovery time, low voltage, low current applications for signal diodes. Anyway, um, that's about all I have to say for the basics on signal diodes. If you have any questions, feel free to ask any in the comments below. If you haven't already, consider clicking here to subscribe. Right over here will be a video that YouTube thinks you'll in find interesting. Right over here will be the Back to Basics playlist, and right here will be the link to Patreon. You can use Patreon to support videos like this one, and you get your Back to Basics videos about four to five days early. Anyway, thanks so much for joining me for this episode, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.